Hey everyone, Shane here with eTrailer.com. Today I have a 2018 Coachman Leprechaun Motorhome. I'm going to walk through how to install Roadmaster's rear anti-sway bar. Adding a new sway bar in place of your factory one is going to give you a lot of benefits. One, the Roadmaster sway bar is going to be much thicker. Two, it's going to be made out of a much more durable metal. So it's going to provide much more stability over our factory one. Factory ones are usually a 1020 steel where the other ones are, or the Roadmasters are our 4140 chrome molly. Now, when we put a sway bar on, the reason for a sway bar is when we're turning corners, we get crosswinds, uh, we go over bumps. The top of our vehicle is very heavy, top heavy. So it tends to lean quite a bit. Well, what the sway bar is gonna do, the upgraded sway bar, it's gonna help keep our vehicle more upright. Obviously, we're gonna get some movement, but if we can reduce how much movement we get, the better our ride quality is gonna be. Before we start our installation, we're going to go ahead and take the motorhome out, take it through our test course, and we're going to test it out to see how the products compare to each other from the factory to the one we're going to be installing. Right off the bat, we notice, you know, going over these uneven bumps that our motorhome wants to rock. So what we're trying to do is we're trying to minimize how much movement we get out of the top because the top of our motorhome is very tall and it's very heavy. So we're very top heavy. Putting on the new sway bars is going to minimize that, as I mentioned. What we're really wanting to do is we're wanting to see how much. Now we've gone over the bumps. We're gonna take it down to the other end of the lot here. We're gonna do some evasive maneuvers and see if we can't get the vehicle to lean a little bit. When we turn sharp corners, maybe driving down a long two lane road and we have a little bit sharper corner to turn is when we start to feel more of the vehicle lean and it kind of stays that way. Kind of makes it nerve wracking when you're driving because you feel like, you almost feel like the vehicle is going to tip over and it makes the ride Wherever we're going, it makes it uncomfortable. You're kind of almost gripping onto the steering wheel. And we want to try to eliminate it, if not decrease how much the sway bar or the vehicle leans. Now with our new sway bars installed, we're gonna go ahead and take it back through our test course again and see how it compares to the factory ones. On our uneven bumps here, I can definitely tell a huge difference uh, the vehicle is not continuing to sway back and forth. It's settling a lot quicker. We don't have as far movement as we did before. We'll get it down here to the other end of the lot, get it into our slalom course. Let's we'll see what it does. I can tell you right off the bat, it seems a lot more comfortable to drive. Really don't have as much leaning. The body's not leaning as much. So again, it's going to make our ride much more comfortable. Now how a sway bar works is where your end links hook on to the end of the sway bar. On our factory one, they actually hook in front of the axle. The back of our vehicle has to work a lot harder. So on the new one, the Roadmaster one, they actually hook to the back part or behind the axle to the frame. So we're getting a lot more support there. Well, how it works is where your end link hooks on to your sway bar. What happens when you get a crosswind, you go around a corner, that bar likes to twist. The more twist you get in the bar, the more body movement you're gonna get on the top side. With our Roadmaster one, because it's much thicker, it's made out of much more durable metal, we're gonna get a lot less twisting, which means our vehicle is gonna stay more upright, make our ride quality that much better. This is what our sway bar is gonna look like when it's installed. You can tell it's much bigger than our standard sway bar or our factory sway bar. It's actually going to be an inch and a half thick or an inch and a half in circumference, uh, which is again much bigger than our factory one. It's going to be constructed out of a 4140 chrome molly, so it's going to be stronger than your typical 1020 steel bars. Uh, what's going to set this apart from your factory sway bar is you'll notice where our end link connects to our frame rail. On our factory one, it actually connects in front of the axle. On our new one, it connects to the frame 
at the back of the axle. So that's giving us much more support than our factory one, again, that mounted towards the front. The kit's gonna come with all the necessary hardware to get it installed. This is what our factory end link looks like. If you see, if we compare it to our new end link, how much different, how much bigger, longer, how much more support we're gonna get out of it. Now that we've gone over some of the features, let's walk through how to get it installed. To start our installation, we're gonna remove the end links from the brackets on our factory sway bar. We're gonna use 18 millimeter socket, two socket to our socket wrench, remove the bolt, We'll have one on each side. Next we'll take a 10 millimeter socket and remove two factory bolts on our sway bar brackets going to our axle. What I would do is have an extra set of hands because when we get so far with this we want to have somebody help us take it down because it is pretty heavy. So I'm not going to take them out all the way. I'm just going to get them close. Now with an extra set of hands, go ahead and remove our factory hardware. And we'll lower our sway bar down to the ground. So what we're going to do is we're going to move our factory brackets here. And we're going to be reusing these. Next, we're going to be installing the new bushings onto our new sway bar. It's going to come with some grease. We want to lubricate the inside of this bushing before we put it on the sway bar. We're going to take it, split it apart, and we'll slide it right over the sway bar like that. And we're going to repeat that for the other side. And we'll take our factory bracket, and we're going to push it right over the bushing like that. And then we'll get an extra set of hands. We'll go ahead and set this up into place and install, loosely install our factory hardware. Line it up with factory holes. Okay, now before we tighten it down, I want to point out that our factory sway bar, these arms went to the front. On our new one, they're actually gonna get installed in the back. The end links are actually gonna get connected to our frame rails. So you wanna make sure when installing it, you'll notice how the bend and the bar is. Typically, the Roadmaster sticker is gonna be on the correct way, so when you install it, as long as this is facing the correct way, you'll be okay. What we're gonna do is we're gonna put on one of our end links. We're gonna raise our sway bar up. We want our sway bar and our end link to be straight. So our sway bar coming straight back, end link going straight up as much as possible. It looks like we have an existing hole. If you don't have an existing hole, you're gonna to have to drill one. We have an existing hole here that we're just gonna open up wider. So find that hole, take something and mark it. And then we're gonna do the same thing on the other side. On our driver's side, we're gonna have this bracket holding our brake line in place. We're gonna to have to remove that bracket in order to get to the hole that we need to drill. And then we can reinstall this in a different location later. The hole we're gonna be drilling out on the driver's side is gonna be right here. So as I mentioned before, we had to move this bracket holding our brake uh, line cable in place, which we'll reinstall in a different location later. There are some cables and hoses that run back here inside the frame rail. So the screwdriver that I got here, I got it ran through and I got it holding everything up out of the way. So when I drill that hole, we don't damage anything. Now we're gonna be drilling the hole, opening it up to a half inch. So you can either just use a half inch drill bit to open it up. I like to use to kind of step it up, uh, kind of help save the drill bits and save your shoulders. When you install them like this, the way this is curved doesn't allow you to hook up to the sway bar. So what we're going to do is we're going to take this out, flip it to the other side. That will allow this to come out instead of in. We'll be able to put it on our sway bar. Should come out fairly easy. 
slide in the opposite side. And then again, when we install it, bar will bend out and meet our sway bar. Do that same thing to the other side, reinstall these and get them installed onto the sway bar. We're gonna take our button head screw, flat washer, then go through like this, through the hole in the frame rail that we just drilled. On the inside, we're gonna put another flat washer and then a nylon lock nut. Once you have all your hardware installed, you're gonna come back with a three quarter inch wrench, a three quarter inch Allen, uh, Allen wrench, and we're gonna tighten and then torque that bolt to the specifications and the instructions. Then you're gonna repeat that process on the other side. Now we're gonna take our end links, we're gonna take the nut off, the washer, and this lower bushing. We're gonna do this on each side. Once we get both sides done, we're gonna raise this up, line up our end link. Bushing is gonna go on the bottom. And to make sure the dimpled side is facing up. Flat washer, or the washer that's on it, you'll see that one side's kind of curved in. You want this to face towards the bushing. Install the nut. Get the one on the other side put in, then we'll come back and tighten the hardware down. 18 millimeter socket, we're gonna come back and tighten these down. I'm gonna make sure you're not compressing that bushing where it spreads out. I'm gonna make sure these do not get over tightened because the bushings will fail. Once you get these tight, we'll come back and we'll tighten these. We're gonna take our bracket for our driver's side brake pedal cable. And we're gonna zip tie it right to our end link. Once you have all your hardware tightened down, you're ready to go. It's gonna do it for a look at end installation on Roadmaster's rear anti-sway bar on a 2018 Coachman Leprechaun motorhome.